good evening, friends. It's good for us to come uh, and gather around God's Word, and uh, we're coming to the last of our reflections on how to survive in troubled times. And uh, uh, this passage ends in Paul's praise for the church for their generosity. And it might be strange to think about generosity in troubled times. But I want to remind you that uh, it is in our giving, in uh, partnering with those kingdom causes that spread the word, that we show our thankfulness to the Lord for his grace. And it is in particular in troubled times that our giving matter more. And so giving is, is, is a sign of the grace we've received in Christ and our thankfulness for that grace, a thankfulness that goes beyond uh, merely good times, but also in troubled times. And it is especially in troubled times that our giving really shows that our heart has been transformed by the gospel and that in that act of giving the Lord himself promised to sustain and uphold and uh, provide for us so that our uh, the way we survive troubled times is not by taking care of ourselves but is really casting ourselves upon the Lord. And part of that is to give, uh, to supply the needs of others, and especially those who are working to spread the gospel message. And the Apostle Paul here has a congregation with which he has a unique relationship, and they have sought him out over the years to uh, support his ministry. And so he says in verse 14 of chapter 4, Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you, Philippians, yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my need once and again, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, notice, first of all, that the Apostle Paul points out that their giving is a partnering, a partnership into which they enter with the Apostle Paul in his ministry. Verse 15, he talks there, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. It's a wonderful way in which the Apostle Paul reminds them that their giving is really their way to share in his ministry and to share in the benefits that others receive through his preaching of the word. And so uh, uh, his uh, uh, blessing is their blessing. His joys is their joys. His sorrows are their sorrows. They share together with him. And there is this beautiful reality that comes, that we share together in the work of Christ when we provide and give uh, uh, to the work of Christ. But now, the Apostle Paul points out that there is a, a, 
not only a partnership, but there is uh, something strange at work through the grace of God in our giving. He says, first of all, uh, that, uh, um, notice, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Now, this is such an interesting way in which he puts it. Giving and receiving. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. What is Paul saying? He says, it's not that I wanted your money and that I acknowledge the money as though I sought it. No, the reason I speak about it is because I want the blessing that belongs to you to come to you, that your giving leads to your receiving. The giver receives what he gives. And so instead of giving, uh, uh, giving should not be reviewed or viewed by us or seen by us as though we uh, uh, get depleted, as though there is nothing, uh, uh, that it's, 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 it's purely a money that goes out from us. No, the giver is more blessed than the receiver. That's Jesus' words himself. That there is a, a, a real boomerang effect in our giving that comes back upon us. And we are blessed more doubly by the giving and the receiving of the benefit and grace that comes. And that's why we're called to be cheerful givers. Because we see how God blesses and gives back, not financially, but more than that through our giving. But not only is there this uh, uh, strange paradox between uh, giving that is also receiving, but notice verse 18, I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Ephrodites the gifts you, you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. Our giving, when we give to ministry, we're not giving to a person, but we're giving to the Lord himself. It's a sacrifice. A sweet, fragrant sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. The kind of sacrifice that Abel gave. Unlike Cain's sacrifice that was rejected, Abel's was received and welcomed by God. And so Paul is saying, our giving to the ministry causes is not to people, but is to the Lord himself. And so uh, it is an act of worship in which we're truly saying thank you to God for the blessings he has poured into our lives. But not only is that a, a, a partnership and we see these two paradoxes, giving is receiving and in giving to ministry we give to God, but it is also connected with a very powerful, glorious promise. Notice, and my God will supply every need of yours according to the riches, uh, his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Isn't that an incredible promise? That God will richly supply your every need. Now, uh, we don't give to receive back. It's not an investment in which we 
try to manipulate the law to buy blessing by our giving. That's a problem with the prosperity gospel. It demands giving and promises blessing, but it is a selfish, self-centered motive. No. Giving flows out of the good we've received in Christ. And yet the Lord promised that when we give, he supplies our needs. The one who gives never lacks because the Lord will take care of us. The Lord will provide. The Lord is the one who supplies our need. And now you see the paradox. You see, when we cling to our stuff and we hold fast and we, we, we're, we're anxious to give, our anxiety grows and our money and our possessions and our things disappear. But when we invest and we give in the Lord, we receive and it grows because God supplies our needs. And then Paul shows us how our giving truly results in the praise of God himself. To God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul often breaks out in his letters and prayers. It's, it's kind of like he's, he is at times so overwhelmed with uh, uh, what he's saying that he, he automatically breaks out in praise. But here it is fitting because what Paul is saying is, your gift to me and your partnership with me and the paradox and the promise that God has made, all of that results in praise to God from me and from you. When we give, we stir up others to praise God and our very gift itself is for the honor and glory of God. God's Glory is why we exist. God's glory is why we uh, enjoy blessing in this life. And the way in which to survive in troubled times is to continue to glorify God. Part of that is really to continue to serve Christ by generously giving. Now, I didn't say this because of a lack that we have here uh, at Redeemer. God has been so faithful and kind to us in spite of the circumstances. And for that, we need to praise and glorify him because God's provision has never been lacking. And he has, he has provided through you, his people. And for that, we praise and magnify him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you continue to supply our every need in Christ. We thank you for the generous hearts that continue to give and to partner with the gospel. May their giving result in great receiving for them. May they see, O oh Lord, the sacrifice that they make as a sacrifice for you. And how you will provide their every need in Christ. Will you receive the glory and praise we bring now? Because you are worthy, Lord of all honor and praise. In troubled times, you have never failed us. You have never neglected us. Your grace and your provision meets us every day. And for that, we praise and magnify you. We pray this, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and your family tonight. Bye-bye.